What's going on beer lovers? Welcome to another episode. This week we have something very special for you. We are doing a fundamental observation vertical at Bottle Logic Brewing. After editing, I realized that there's just way too much content to squeeze into one episode. So this is actually going to be a two-parter. So make sure that you watch this episode in its entirety and stay tuned for the second part, which will be coming out tomorrow. So strap in, crack open a cold one, and let's have some beer. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jacob. I'm Mary Jane. And today we are drinking Fundamental Observation from 2016 to 2020. We're literally going through each bottle from 2016 all the way up to this year's release, and we're going to tell you guys all about it. We're going to have some of the brewers stop by and talk to us a little bit about the beer, as well as just kind of having fun and getting drunk. Uh, so a lot has changed here at Bottle Logic over the last yeah. year. Jacob, why don't you go ahead and talk about it? I mean, we followed them from one brew house to having two warehouses to now they have three. Uh, it expands almost the whole little length of the street. Uh, we just had a quick tour. They're to the point where they're stacking a lot of their tanks. Like, like I said, from year one, that was not at all their, what they were doing. They had some big equipment, but this is now just, it's, it's massive. <laughs> <laughs> this place has grown exponentially and you wouldn't know it because we've all been locked inside our houses. We're actually sitting out on their brand new patio, which has taken years to build. Maybe the one true blessing in disguise with this whole COVID situation is that they finally have been able to do this. And now we're sitting out here on a nice hot summer day about to drink a bunch of barrel aged stouts. So guys, are you ready? Yeah, let's probably not. <laughs> Well, you better suck it up. <laughs> Let's have some beer. All right, guys. So the first beer up is going to be Fundamental Observation Year 2016. This, again, is a 14.1% ABV bourbon barrel aged vanilla stout uh, with Madagascar vanilla beans. Oh, geez. Calm down. Oh, my God. You realize we're doing a marathon, right? <laughs> Woo! I mean, it's it's going on four years now. Um, the aroma has not dissipated. That's no. It's um, got huge bourbon character. I mean, you sniff this. It, I feel like I'm drinking bourbon on the rocks just from the aroma alone. But just so much vanilla still after four years. Uh, if you guys know anything about barrel aging beers, yes, it's fun to do it. But especially when you add something like a delicate vanilla flavor or coffee, those tend to fade over the years. Uh, sometimes very quickly, especially in a hot environment like we are in California, um, those don't always last. So we try to encourage you, you know, if you like it right now, drink it. But we waited and... It's paying off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and dig in on it. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Ooh, it's smooth. Oh, wow. Subtle, even like a little sweetness at the end. Yeah, this is this Very is surprising yeah. because it's still got a lot of the malt complexities in here. The bourbon actually is not as strong as I thought it would be based on the aroma. It's it's smooth drinking. It's silky on your tongue. Yeah, I would say it's gotten a little lighter and silkier um, as opposed to like thick thicker. And pudgy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's definitely a little thinner, but it's actually kind of a welcome uh, only because this is beer number one. I don't know if I want to chew on a big, thick bourbon barrel aged beer. So well, maybe towards the end, but yeah, towards towards the end we can look forward to that. Um, the vanilla is still extremely prominent. I'm surprised after four years. I'm I'm actually getting quite a bit of vanilla off this. Yeah, at least for me, that's kind of one thing I would like to preserve is the bourbon and vanilla notes. I'm kind of forgiving if it thins out a little bit. Sometimes that does make it easier to drink. <laughs> um, and what's your opinion, MJ? I when you, I, I was kind of afraid because it kind of <laughs> fair, but it's really smooth. It's very yeah. light and um, it has a, a slight sweetness at the end. So, well, and I will say it sticks to the glass pretty well too. Yeah, um, absolutely no head, 
which is to be expected. Yeah, and that's fine. Of this style. Um, what I will tell you, I know a lot of you beer fans out there are wondering, where's 2015? How are you doing a vertical and missing the very first one that came out? To be honest with you guys, I've been hunting one down over the last year. And I've had a few friends since then who have actually cracked open a 2015 bottle. And they said it was no good. Uh, that all the flavor had kind of been lost. Uh, you're not, it's not an enjoyable beer. So I told myself, why am I going to pay a lot of money to get this bottle? Or what kind of terrible things am I going to have to do to get this bottle? And at the end of the day, I said, you know what? Five is enough. Um, and 2016 is tasting great. So this is a great way to start. So when I think of fundamental observation, I automatically think of just the years and years of dedication to craft that Bottle Logic has had. And I think anybody who has maybe never tried Bottle Logic beer before, even if they're not into bourbon barrel aged beers, this is literally like a signature beer for this brewery. This really oh, yeah. tells you like that they stand for innovation, creativity, and longevity. And as a four-year-old bottle of beer this has maintained its integrity the whole time just like this brewery so i'm stoked i'm super happy with this beer but i'm ready for the next one how about you guys let's go on yeah. all right on to 2017. all right guys so we're on to fo year 2017 that's batch two and i don't know if you noticed but this isn't jacob anymore uh i got greg here so greg why don't you tell everybody who you are hi my name is greg clearly uh, I am the uh, lead brewer here at Bottle Logic. And Greg has actually been here for five years? Five and a half. Five and a half years. So that means he's been around for all these beers. Um, and also you've played quite a role in a lot of the batches, right? Yes. Uh, how about 2017? Um, I, you know, they all start to get a little blurry. If I'm being a little <laughs> honest with you. Um, I, I do believe through the uh, years that I've been here, 2017 was still a turn that I was uh, fully on the brew deck for. So... Um, uh, I would have had, it, we double brew uh, these beers, so I would have, I was typically the AM guy, so I would have been the guy to start the beer. Gotcha. Uh, the, I, I was basically turn one and three out of the four we do per tank. So if you screwed up the foundation of it, the whole batch is ruined, right? Uh, that was on the next guy. <laughs> it was up it's, to him to it's, fix it's, it, it's, right? It's usually how it went. It was the next guy's fault, <laughs> always. Oh, Jacob wants some too. There we go. That rogue hand. Yeah, so... Uh, a big difference that I'm noticing on here, ABV is 13.6 versus 14.1, but you're still looking at the same basic, uh, you know, vanilla bean, chocolate, bourbon, barrel aged. Do you guys uh, like source your barrels from specific places normally for these brews? Uh, so when it comes to uh, working with the barrels, uh, as you get bigger and more reputable, you kind of start to work your way up the ladder by the ability to pick uh, at that particular time we were a little picky in that we wanted a certain set of, of heaven hills and buffalo traces and uh, uh, there's always a wheat whiskey in there that was a harder time to pick on because the barrel broker we would use would just give us what he had so one year it was Bernheim one year it was heaven hill wheat whiskey so the wheat whiskey kind of always changed um, but we always tried to go for like the core four which was a, a heaven hill four roses or sorry core three heaven hill four roses and buffalo trace um, and so our broker was able to get all of those for us pretty consistently. And so that's what we would use. And then um, you just blend them. Yeah. And then, and then we'd fill all, um, they would kind of come all mixed. So as long as we had something of everything in there, we would go ahead and just, and blend. We'd pick the ones that we liked the best. Uh, I was always partial to four roses. Uh, typically a lot of the staff, uh, like Buffalo Trace, I, maybe I'm the oddball. I don't know, but, um, four roses was always a little hotter. I was like a little bit more burned to my, uh, my FO. So four roses was my alley, but, uh, um, yeah, it was always a blend down and and combine it all together and see what what made the best overall flavor. Awesome. Well, hey, let's take a whiff and dig in. This one's a little bit more subdued on the on the bourbon character than 2017. But I'm liking the there's light chocolate, light roast, a little vanilla. Bourbon's still there. You just gotta kind of dig for it a little bit more. What do you think, Mary Jane? Um, it's less delicate than the other one, but it's still light. I feel like I would expect it to be hot still, but it's not. So it's really yeah. Like subdued a little bit. Um, it's a little hotter than 16, but mm -hmm. not, not like crazy. 
I don't feel like it's hotter than 16, to be honest with you. Um, yeah? I don't know. I mean, we did just go back to back, but maybe my palate's already used to it. Uh oh! My palate's used to drinking. I, Fo, this is gonna be bad. <laughs> I'm 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 with you on that one. I tend to get more overall baked good with yeah. the chocolate and the vanilla, where the 16 was just a lot more vanilla, vanilla. by mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is this is like a, like a brownie cake almost. Like you yeah. get a little bit of fudginess, but it's more like the crust. You're not eating like a full brownie. It's not heavy. It's not that thick brownie. It's more like a. Oh, was it brownie cake. Christmas? Brownie. Oh, the brownie brittle. Yeah. Brownie. Brownie brittle. 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 Those those <laughs> things are an addiction. Sorry guys, we're yeah. talking to Jacob off camera. <laughs> we're supposed to be looking at you, but anyways, yeah. I mean, that would be kind of my tasting note. Um, the bourbon again is very soft on the aroma. You do get it in the body. Um, for me though, it, it's really the the chocolate and vanilla combination that you're picking up on this. It's also a little thicker than 2016. It's definitely got a heavier mouthfeel to it, but still not like that big chewy like those east coast like pastry stout kind of vibes like you're not chewing on this it's still it's still smooth drinking surprisingly effervescent i will say mm -hmm. it's, it's it's got a little crispness to it that i wasn't expecting for a year that's now three years old yeah man these four, beers have held up pretty good three, four i don't four yeah. 2017 2018 2019 yeah four years old i know it's it's hard to tell right what year is it again we've been locked in our houses for the last six months so you know happens um so i i'm also kind of curious you know five years of fundamental observation uh i know you guys aren't brewing the same recipe every single time there's always little tweaks to it how do you guys kind of decide where you're going to do your tweaks like how do you adjust your recipe to what the consumer wants well it's for something like this it's tough because people have an idea of what fundamental observation is and so our ability to just wholesale change is not there because that would we could turn this into a florida stout at the drop of a hat yeah. and it may be really good but it wouldn't be fo anymore so uh, the hard part we're running into is that fine balance of tweaking it just right to kind of fit while not just starting over again and making a brand new beer and so that's that's the fun yet difficult yet enjoyable side of making the same beer now for as many years as I've done it, since I won't even try to do the math anymore, um, <laughs> trying to make the same beer, yet while still trying to be progressive and current with what the market actually wants. And so um, it's it's fun, it's challenging. You know, we, we do little things here or there, um, trade secrets, so to speak, to, uh, uh, to try to accommodate some of that. Um, and some have worked out really well, and some... You know, we're like, okay, well, this is good, but that's not what we're looking for. And through the years, we've had all had all kinds of little bits of, of things like that, or little nuance that that um, provided us good information on on how we can keep making this beer better every single year. Awesome. Well, I am thoroughly enjoying this episode already, and we're only two in. Um, well, wow, this was a great one, Greg. Thanks for joining us, man. Happy to thanks be here for all your input. Cheers. Cheers. We'll shake your hand too. Cheers. cheers. And uh, we're going we're gonna to finish these up and then move on to 2018. So here we go. Hey, guys, we're back and we're joined by Heinz. Hi. Hey. Yeah, and the sun is moving, so don't mind this pole. <laughs> it's there for lighting purposes. It's very necessary. Um, but up next, we are actually going to be drinking the next FO, which is 2018 at 13.2%. Um, so right along with the other ones, not too drastically different. Uh, I'm going to pour them out. All right, so Heinz, you actually started in 2018, so it's kind of slightly appropriate FO for you. Um, but you also specialize with kind of that lab analysis, was that right? Yeah, um, my background is in chemistry. I graduated from Cal State Long Beach with a, a chemistry BS. And then I went to UC Davis for more brewing specific uh, knowledge and 2018 was actually the year that I finished that program and started working here at Ball Logic. Awesome man well that's cheers to schooling because yeah, I mean cheers. I know how hard that is <laughs> so that's awesome that you went to school not only for chemistry but also get more in depth on uh, just the brewing process in general so what can you tell us about I mean uh, Bottle Logic's kind of use of vanilla? <laughs> well one thing we really uh, 
like to do at Biologic is accentuate the vanilla characteristic. Uh, and you know, as you know, uh, vanilla uh, changes year to year because right. of um, of growing conditions, and uh, we actually get like. Um, uh, fact sheets on the different compounds that make vanilla vanilla, like okay. vanillin and glycol, and all these different um, aromatic compounds that we associate vanilla uh, to have. Um, and it, while it's good to have all of these like numbers for uh, specific vanilla compounds, uh, the end result is the taste of it. Right. And we do our due diligence of trying every batch uh, year to year and picking out which vanilla that uh, we perceive to be the the like F-O. the most vanilla yeah <laughs> um, yeah there's uh, vanilla from all over the world with their own right. different characteristics and um, we we just try to do sensory uh, to pick which one uh, represents fo the most cool That's okay cool. awesome so what do you guys think of 2018? Have you guys had a sip yet? It's a great color. The carbonation is so good. Yeah, the there's carbonation. definitely more carbonation on this guy. You can definitely tell. Uh, it looks fresher, I guess, is the <laughs> easiest thing to say to you guys. Yeah, it has the great, great, like, uh, cake vanilla that we try to strive for uh, every time we pick vanilla beans. Yeah, this kind of... Um, pops more to me and I think that does have a bit more to do with it being more carbonated because it's fresher now you know 2018 we're, we're starting to come up close to, <laughs> to present day this is like a um, vanilla bomb dude. Yeah. like yeah Jeff saying like kind of like a vanilla bomb um, yeah the carbonation really pushes those flavors on your palate um, I think sometimes when you get into those cellar beers you almost forget what carbonation does to a beer and this is kind of reminding me but yeah, it really does help those flavors along on your on your taste buds at least. Um, it's very pleasant. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, carbonation actually uh, plays a big part in your perceived taste of a beer. Uh, the, yeah, uh, because in your in your tongue uh, that carbon dioxide uh, converts to carbonic acid. Okay. Um, with and it gives more of us like tang and that fizziness that we yeah. all associate with like. Uh, soda pop for mm. yeah carbonated beer for sure yeah this definitely has more of that than the last two so Heinz I noticed that um, this is an imperial start aged with Madagascar vanilla beans a blend of bourbon barrels mm-hmm. so each FO so far has Madagascar vanilla beans why Madagascar instead of let's say Tahitian or any other of the 27 something varieties of uh, vanilla um, yeah, with our extensive vanilla trials, we've uh, found out that Madagascar has always been consistently giving us the uh, cookie batter brownie, like the um, your baking vanilla taste that we're striving for in our FO releases. But okay. Yeah. There's yeah, there's like twenty seven other varieties that we that we try. Um, uh, from all regions of the world, like Costa Rica, Ugandan, um, Tahitian. Um, but yeah, Madagascar has, I don't know what's in the soil in Madagascar, but <laughs> it's its the driving factor that makes our FO taste the way FO does. Um, and yeah, that doesn't mean to say that we have, we're not going to try all these other different vanilla uh, types in other stasis releases. And um, so I don't know if you know this, but vanilla is very expensive. It's like uh, yeah, very expensive. It's like gold. So <laughs> yeah, more more expensive than silver. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, if any of you have ever questions like, wow, I don't know if I could really drop whatever on a couple bottles of FO, you know, our stasis release, uh, you do have to remember not only the time it takes to barrel age something like this, the work, you know, these hard brewers do to put into just brew it in general but also just the raw ingredients themselves um making something taste this strongly of vanilla and uh i think after this many tastings of this beer tastes a lot of fucking vanilla (laughs) so they don't skimp on it um this is an expensive ingredient if any of you homebrewers out there have brewed with uh vanilla not only is it kind of 
it's kind of annoying to work with too, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, the way we process it, it gets everywhere. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, well, we appreciate all the hard work you put into this. I think it's well worth it. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you for all your hard work. Yeah, this was actually the first FO I worked with awesome. at Biologic. So <laughs> it's glad to uh, have this retrospective uh, insight with you guys. Yeah, well, thank you for joining us, man. Yeah, <laughs> cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, stay tuned for part two of this two-part series. That'll be coming out tomorrow. I hope to see you there. Cheers.